Walters here, and below me, you can see, is Russ Corey with Sanmar, and he is the strategic account manager for the or decor of Decorator Relations. And today, we are going to go over how to sell top. Uh, excuse me, how to print top selling tees specifically for tri-blends. And let me just tell you that the shirts that Russ has sent me are probably some of the softest t-shirts I have ever felt. So I am really, really excited to have this class and just really educate you guys on what materials to use and I know you are going to love what Russ has to say about what type of materials to look for when it comes to the tri -blend. So we're gonna start off by showing um, a PowerPoint. And yes, you can actually download this PowerPoint uh, right now, it's already in files. And of course, if you are catching it late or you have to piece out early, then you can go back and watch this class um, fairly quick after we are finished. So let's share the PowerPoint get going, and then we will head to decorating. All right, so on the second, well, third class on how to start a t-shirt business from home, like I said, we're going over how to print top selling tees, specifically talking about tri-blends. So if you're not familiar with what a tri-blend is or what really consists in a tri-blend, it's a fabric make, made up of three different materials. It's typically cotton, polyester, and generally rayon. Today, you're gonna to learn about a couple of other materials that are starting to come about when it comes to tri-blends. Now, um, we will dive deeper a couple of slides in on exactly why these shirts are extremely soft and what you need to look for when it comes to sourcing garments. With the way of the world right now, um, Russ and I really wanted to educate you guys on the material content, uh, the fiber content of the shirt, and not necessarily the shirt itself. Take it away, Russ. All right. So we're talking about a tri-blend. And as a tri-blend, as the, the prefix says, it's three materials. So it's, it's primarily cotton and polyester, with that third component being the magic piece. Uh, what you see normally is, you know, widespread in the, in the industry is rayon. Uh, and that's when you, somebody says a tri-blend, that's typically what we're talking about. Uh, the reason for the rayon is it really gives it a, a luxurious, soft feel. Rayon was made as a silk substitute. So uh, what you're seeing here is a higher production, higher value shirt uh, with a softer feel at 30 to 40 singles. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know what singles are, uh, singles are like basically a softness rating, kind of like your sheet count or your thread count for sheets. Uh, a straight cotton t-shirt would be somewhere around 18 to 20 singles. Your blends would be somewhere in 20 to 30. And then your tri-blends would be in that really soft hand, that 30 to 40 range. Uh, and these are the, the, the shirts that are really on trend in that fashion and retail, uh, you know, kind of that buttery soft feel that you just kind of want to wear all day long. Uh, the advantage of the tri-blend is you're getting the, the comfort of the cotton, the strength of the polyester, and then you're getting that, that luxurious feel, drape, softness of the rayon. Um, and that's really kind of a, a, a tri-blend in a nutshell. So with Tri-blends themselves, we've kind of changed a little bit and, and added, uh, you know, with, with the predominance of work from home and athleisure markets, people want something that's a little bit more form-fitting, a little bit more comfortable, uh, and, less, and less of that luxurious drape, soft, you know, kind of casual feel. So uh, spandex kind of came in and it gives you that, that freedom of movement. It's not going to bend and bind. Uh, and, and still maintains that, that look and retail feel. Uh, the, other, the other change to a tri-blend is the addition of sustainable materials like modal. Uh, and modal is, is a sustainable product made from beech trees. It's a little bit more eco-friendly than, than the rayon side uh, and, and gives you that kind of that sustainable story to, to kind of go on from there. And 
what we're talking, uh, we're looking at a tribe line. When you look at a tribe line itself, they've got a distinct heather, a heather look to them. Uh, and that's the, the weave of the material with the polyester and the cotton fibers together. So you're going to see that distinctive kind of heathered look. There is one shirt in the industry and Bella Canvas offers a solid tribe line. Uh, again, it's, it's a little bit more high end than, than this as far as the good, better, best. But uh, there is a solid color out there if that's uh, something that you want to kind of go after. As, as well as the, the fabric itself, it's going to be real smooth due to the manufacturing process. So it's, it really lends itself well to, to printing, whether you're doing DTG, screen print, or in our case right now, heat press. You've got a nice, great surface to work with. The only thing that you really want to be careful with with a tri-blend, there's going to be varying amounts of cotton, poly, and rayon. So depending on the particular shirt that you choose, you certainly want to test it. There, there are, it is going to be some heat sensitivity. The best thing that you can do is always just kind of check, make sure your, your heat press is running right, and away we go. Okay, so I really wanted to create a cheat sheet for you to understand why or when you would use a rayon or a, span, a spandex or a modal, modal. And um, so I kind of created little sections. I've been calling it modal, modal, you know, like it sounds like transport to me. So bear with me if it comes out wrong. But for rayon, as you can see, just like Russ said, it was created as a silk substitute. It has a luxurious soft feel. Um, it is made with cellulose fibers, which is typically plant-based. And then all three of these actually offer some type of moisture absorbent. Where I really like the spandex side of things is that this is going to help retain its original shape, just like Russ had said. And I'm going to try to show you the difference um, in how these shirts can expand with the body, how they snap back. Um, but the spandex one also feels a little bit thicker in terms of fibers compared to the rayon and especially the modal. Um, the spandex with it being a little bit thicker seems a little bit more durable, but that's only because the rayon makes it so silky like and same thing for the modal. Um, like he said, this is sustainable. That is so important to a lot of people right now. So if you're able to offer a product that is made from, you know, beech trees, and then of course, using less chemicals than other man-made materials, that's going to hit a lot of marks for people. Again, it's still very soft and smooth to the touch. And for all of these, they, they do hold their shape, but as you'll see that spandex, um, version. It, it does have that capability to stretch and then just kind of snap back because you're use, utilizing spandex. So when it comes to decoration, what are things that we should consider? Yes, you're going to be able to sell these um, just simply by the way they feel, but because they feel a little bit nicer, um, there is going to come with a, a higher cost typically associated to these. So if you are decorating um, with transfers and depending on the heat, it's so important to um, really understand what could potentially scorch your garments and of course, how to get the softest feel on them. So we know these are soft and extremely lightweight. Uh, lightweight being breathable and thinner in the fiber. So if you're looking for a heavy duty t-shirt, um, that, that's not these just because of how soft and thin they are. Um, these could be heat sensitive, so application temperature should be considered. So just again, a couple of other little um, nuggets is that avoid heavy or rigid materials. These fabrics are going to have a lot of movement. They're going to drape really nice on the body. So just consider the type of material or application that you're using. That way, um, your logo or your decoration can continue to move with the garment. Um, I strongly encourage you to educate your customers about the, desk, the best decoration method. If they're wanting to embroider something like these and they're adamant about that, why? Why embroidery? Um, that's going to be a little rigid if you're doing something like a left chest. So try to navigate what's important to them and then recommend the best decoration method in that particular case. 
Um, I did test uh, the inside of these and I did not go over 300 degrees in testing. So test as you need to if you're going higher, but uh, consider transfers under 300 degrees. Those typically um, seem to be a better heat uh, for sensitive garments. Sometimes rayon can be extremely sensitive. So again, um, both Russ and I urge you just to test your garment before you do that 50 piece order and you know something went off. All right, so these are the items that we are decorating. Um, all of these products can be found on Sanmar. We're also doing three different types of tees from a unisex to a women's and then a um, raglan long sleeve. They're all going to consist of a different uh, third material. So the District Flex tee actually consists of spandex. And um, as you can see, we're going to be decorating with Premium Plus, which is a CAD cut, so it is a vinyl transfer. And um, I will go over that in just a quick second as I actually come back on camera and we do some decoration. But you can see I've also listed the application time. So for those of you that have already purchased the marketing kit, we will actually be utilizing all transfers available in the marketing kit today. So. The Premium Plus and the Metallic are the samples in the marketing kit for stalls. And the long sleeve is going to be the Elasti Print transfer in the Transfer Express marketing kit. So you can get these at your fingertips. Next in the middle is the All Made, which is going to get into that sustainable type of t-shirt. This is going to have the modal. And we're going to be using Cut Cut Metallic. It's still a very, very lightweight movable material and it's one of my favorites so I'm excited about that and then of course on this sport tech posi charge long sleeve tri blend this is going to be um I'm going to say the normal it is the cotton poly and a rayon it has excellent drape and as you can see for elasti print we'll be pressing at 300 degrees 15 seconds medium pressure with a cold peel so now, the reason why I wanted to give all of that information to you is just in case I um, leave something off when it comes to pressing, you can actually go back to that slide and have it right there in front of you. And of course, with those marketing kits, you'll get those instructions as well. So I'm just making sure we are okay on time because I can get chatty. Russ, I don't know about you. No. Uh, so feel free to pop in at any point um, as we are decorating to elaborate just a little bit more. I know earlier when we were talking about garments that we wanted to decorate and show, you had mentioned um, just a lot of things being out of stock. So what's your recommendation to people looking for a specific maybe cotton poly spandex they want to go use this district shirt and it's not available. What do you recommend looking for? Oh, great question. So the first thing that I would say is if you're, if you're offering something to a customer and you're not certain that the, there's inventory there, don't focus on a brand or a, a specific style. Uh, be more vague. Say, hey, I've got a, a tri-blend shirt that I can offer to you or uh, a 50-50, whatever it is in, in that regard. And that way, if Samar doesn't have it, you can source from multiple different warehouses uh, and still fill that need for your customer. So give yourself that freedom and that flexibility to kind of work with the challenges that are out there in the world right now. Awesome. That's, I think, one of the biggest things that I really wanted to get across in this class was understanding, like you had talked earlier about um, the, the shingles. Is that right? Singles. 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 <laughs> Shingles, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it was there, but clearly not all the way. Um, so as he, as you noticed, he said earlier, the 20, the 30, 40, that all equates to how smooth and soft a garment is. So if you know what you're looking for, just try to focus on the fiber content. Um, unless your customer is so adamant about a particular shirt, then they have to be patient, I'm assuming. So, okay, so the first item, 
like I said, is this Sport Tech Posi Charge. Now, this does have a heather look to it. And because of my light, sometimes it typically blurs out. Um, there we go. You can see a little bit of the heather on that. But this is so thin and lightweight, not thin as in see-through, just it's not a thick piece of material. So for this particular, um, let's say customer, this is going to be school and sports focused. This is an elastic print, print transfer from Transfer Express. And um, I know Jenna mentioned this earlier, but you will hear from Dave Connor in just a little bit going over how to create something like this and using the Easy View Designer in Transfer Express. But with ElastiPrint, it's great for polyester. Um, it has some movement, a little stretch and rebound. And because this garment has the cotton polyester and the rayon in it, it is just going to really move with the garment um, in a great way. So what we're going to do is just cut out our transfer. So when it comes to selling these type of tees, if you noticed, we have several different transfers on this sheet or uh, logos on this sheet. This is also going to help you maximize um, your overall price that you can give to your customer, maximize the sheet, make your transfers go down. Overall, your profit is going to be higher. Now I'm using a Hotronics Auto Clam. We'll also dive a little bit deeper on the A to Z, the Auto Clam and the Fusion and getting to know your equipment. So I thread, I open it like a pillowcase. I also have the tag along platen in here, which is my favorite. So I'm really excited that I get to use that for everything. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is slide off those seams as best as possible. Because we are using a screen printed transfer, we do not want to use pillows, no pillows whatsoever. And like Jenna said, uh, Transfer Express offers mouse pads and then you can also purchase Print Perfect pads. Um, they are nice and dense and you really wanna make sure that you have that firm backing when it comes to using plastisol transfers. Um, I'm going to pre-press. And that is to make sure I get an accurate read on my pressure. So I'm going to adjust this just a smidge. And then it also allows us to really smooth out the garment, rid of any moisture and wrinkles. So in this particular case, I did have to add a little notch. And if you notice where Goof Proof had lines, elastic print does not. So I am just going to find some light and I'm able to match up each end of this house that we are, or that house goes like this, if you guys can see it. Mm, not really, you'll just have to wait and see. This arrow I was able to match up and then same thing for Springfield, I can create a crease at the top, letting me know where the center of my transfer is. Now, I also know for me, this is a like a fingers width down. So when we are trying to find out where the midpoint is on the shirt, instead of using three or four, I might use two or three just to make sure that we are not too far down and then not too far up. So I'm doing this from the side where I normally do it in front. So I will go back through and check just to make sure nothing is all wonky. So bear with me as I step in front of the camera. Now, one thing that you can do to, to make sure, this is called a tag along platen because you can actually start tagging at the neck, but I am going to slide the collar or the neck around and it's going to pop up my tag. I know tags aren't always in the center of garments. However, this gives me a good, um, center point from the crease that I had made as well as the tag. So from here, we are going to go for 30 seconds, or excuse me, 300 degrees for 15 seconds. And this is a cold peel. 
So once we are done, I'm going to take that garment off, set it aside, and then we'll keep moving. Our metallic is also a cold peel. So if there's any questions, we'll take those and then peel once both transfers are cold. All right, I'm moving it down just a smidge again. And just quickly adjusting my time. I only had it at eight seconds. And so that is done and complete. So these are transfers that you could use as a different location. It could become left chest. You could do bags. You could do um, pockets a lot of different options. And instead of utilizing just one transfer for sheet, we were able to get a two, four, six, seven on there. All right, I'm gonna take this collar down and then just set this guy aside. And let's go ahead and go into our next option. So up next is my favorite shirt. I'm going to have to give this one a little extra love just because of how soft and I, I wouldn't call it suede like Russ. How would you describe the texture or the feel of this? I mean, it's, it's really it's, rare. It's buttery soft. There you it's, go. It's buttery soft. That's the, the easiest way to say it. So this is the district shirt that, um, I had said in our PowerPoint, I believe it was the DT 7000, but okay, just to give you an idea. So this is the spandex and it easily just snaps back. It's a little bit thicker in, or a little bit heavier in weight, but we're talking a smidge. Um, it's, it's just buttery soft. And as soon as I opened these shirts from Russ, I told him, I don't think I had ever felt anything softer. So um, take it from me that this one feels amazing. I would really call this um, on brand with something that Under Armour, Nike, even Athleta, uh, Lulu type of t-shirts, just really nice, thick. Even though it's a t-shirt, there's not a lot of structure, but that spandex is really going to help keep its shape. All right, now that I'm done talking about how much I love this t-shirt, we're gonna go ahead and thread this, and then I'll tell you what transfer we are using. I'm gonna adjust my time again. We're only pre-pressing for four seconds. And why that's pre-pressing, let me go over the transfer. So this is the premium plus transfer that is in the marketing, Stoll's marketing kit, like I said. Premium Plus is excellent for polyester and spandex. It has an incredible stretch and rebound. It's also buttery soft. So this on top of this is going to be extremely smooth to the touch. It's also gonna be very, very lightweight and flexible. And I think one of the biggest things when it comes to decorating garments um, that I prefer is trying to keep the overall like type of shirt in the structure that it is. That's the easiest way to, for me to say it. If it's a shirt that's gonna move and stretch and rebound, try to avoid putting any type of product on there that's gonna resist that type of movement. So this is um, an excellent option. You can also go as low as 280 degrees and go up to 300 degrees. So. Again, that's a, a great way. This is an excellent material for um, just about anything. I would try to stay away with something like a texture or a Sherpa just because it's so lightweight. It's not going to hold those fibers down as well. So that's what this looks like. Same thing, just like I did for that Elasti print. I am finding my middle. And I'm just going to go ahead, sorry guys, I'm in front of the camera, bring up that tag, that way we can make sure we are as centered as possible. And then from here, I am not quite four. There is a 
a B in this, remember. So just make sure that you're going off of a kind of a midpoint for your highest point of the letter. And the reason being is because if we go three down, say from the M, then our B is going to be up at our, um, our sternum. So we just, or our clavicle. So we just want to make sure that we've got that as best as possible. Okay. So now that we are in the center, this one's easy. This is a hot peel and cover sheet. And this will go for eight to 10 seconds. I currently have it on eight seconds. Once it's done, we'll be able to peel and I can just really show you how easily this garment moves. Now, I do not recommend uh, going crazy and just stretching it right off the press. Let it cool down. Let that adhesive really firm up and adhere to the garment before you give it a crazy test and pull. So as you can see, this just peels so easily. And because there's free floating text, there's not a lot of heaviness in the logo. It just... It feels so soft to the touch. You can't, I mean, you can't even feel this, that it's on there. So we're gonna let this one cool down. Um, our elastic print has cooled, so we'll go ahead and peel that. Kelly, before you go on, I'm gonna ask a couple questions. Go for it. Um, so we have um, Don who asked if you can sublimate onto tri buns. You're really not going to want to do that just because there's not, it's, it's not going to be over 50% polyester. So anything that's cotton or rayon or spandex isn't going to accept that dye. Uh, and because you're going to get that kind of heathered look, it's always going to kind of be a weathered or kind of not, it's not really going to be as crisp as you want is kind of, is my, my impression. Okay. Thank you. And then um, Kathy asked if the shirts with spandex in them are hotter. She has a lot of customers that want shirts that are cooler to wear. It's hot down here in Texas. The, just the lightweight, the cotton and poly is going to be uh, a, a, a breathable combination. And the spandex is, it's a dense fiber, but you're not adding a lot of weight to the shirt. It's got a, 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 a like a compact feel, but you're, it's going to be very breathable for you. Awesome. All right. That's it for right now. Okay. So really quick, uh, Russ just said several key words, um, dense and compact. So I was saying it was a little bit heavy, like it was a little bit heavier and it's, it's not. So it's definitely a more dense shirt, meaning, um, the, the way it feels, feels more dense where the rayon and the modal, feel like there could be more air that would travel through it, but it still feels very, very lightweight. Um, and then uh, I think the other one was compact and that's kind of the same, same in that dense form. Um, I, I really wish I could virtually give you guys like a sample to feel of these garments um, because I think once you feel them, you'll go, ah, I know exactly what she's talking about. So say something like hundred percent cotton, um, you know, it's going to be a little bit more rigid on the body or structured. And then when you add in this poly and then these other three materials, the, the movability or movement of these garments is really incredible. The, the drape, and it's going to hang without being clingy. So I don't want any drape to get confused with it being a shirt that, um, say women or anybody else would be self-conscious about because of how it's on the body. So I hope that cleared up or helped a couple of you try to understand exactly what it is I'm, I'm touching because these, these fabrics really are incredible. Okay. So let's go ahead and peel our elasti print. I'm going to try to do this this way. So it's easier if you're on a flat surface, but I want you to see, okay, we're gonna have to go back here. So 
again, extremely smooth. This does have just a little bit more of a sheen, almost kind of like a satin finish, but it doesn't feel thick. Um, it will stretch as you can see on the body and then go back to its original logo. Um, nice crisp lines. And of course, because this is a two color, we only had to hit it one time since both colors were on the transfer. So that's what this guy looks like. That elastic prints with the tactile feel that it has, it's really kind of that, that's what you're seeing in retail right now. So that's a great look right there. Um, the next, this is cooled down a little bit as well. You can just see how this is stretching and then we're not getting any type of distortion in your remember, remember your why. Okay, moving on to the sustainable. And just checking a couple of things. All right, so kindness always wins. So we've hit on a little bit more of a sporty style. Then we've hit a little bit more on a boutique or um, just a t-shirt that you could put out there and somebody would want to grab, whether it was from a workout, a gym, something motivational, um, kind of hitting on a couple of different markets as well. Now, this kindness always wins. This is our CAD cut metallic. Um, it can be applied at 285 and some people, or not some people, people always ask me, well, is it a crunchy metallic? It's very, very mirrored. And I'm going to show you how to get two different looks with this metallic. But when it is on the garment, it's extremely thin and it has some great movement as well. So these are all two, three incredible products, two different types of vinyl, and then one screen printed transfer or Plastisol ink and several other transfers that both Jenna went over and Jennifer will be going over in the performance um, style uh, type of fabrics are going to be able to work with these products just because more and more are getting developed at under that 300 degrees. So this is got a little bit more of maybe a cotton feel because of the modal compared to the rayon where the rayon definitely has that, that silky, um, well, I mean, it was created to be in replace of silk. So just a little bit different sheen, maybe more of a matte finish where the rayon has just a little bit of a sheen to the garment. Um, and as you can see, crew neck, great basic everyday t-shirt as well. So same thing, we're gonna pre-press. And again, just making sure that we are nice and centered in our transfer. Now, if you also noticed for the elastic print, I did not use a cover sheet. And for the two, to, the two vinyls that we are using, I did, or I will, especially with the metallic. So if you're using a, a screen printed transfer or a plastic salt transfer, you do not need a cover sheet. Okay, again, same process, finding our middle, pulling up our tag. And then I'm gonna go about four down because this is a little bit higher of a crew. And then because this is a nice, easy box, I'm actually just taking my hand and making sure I have about the same room on either side for getting that good location, nice center location. All right, now metallic is eight to 10 seconds, 285. We are pressing at 300 degrees today. And that is simply to keep everything consistent with um, what we are, are pressing and not adjusting and waiting on the press. Got it out. 
Okay, so this one I'm gonna pull off and let it cool down prior to peeling the carrier. And you will notice it's going to be a really glossy mirror-like finish. When we go to hit it again with the press, it's going to give it a brushed look. And I love both ways. I think they are a great option to provide customers, especially for somebody wanting a pop, but not really wanting that uh, in your face mirror like. And just keep in mind that if you go back and you have to press one again, then you have to do that to all of them with this material. Okay, while this is cooling down, um, do we have any other questions out there? Yes. Um, for you, we have a question on when would you use high tech versus low tech premium plus? So the high tech and the low tech is only telling you what type of carrier it has. So the material itself for premium plus is identical. It applies the same, it feels the same, and it has the same amount of stretch. There is a difference in color options, but high tack is definitely going to be a lot tackier than the low tack. However, I still feel like the low tack has a really good grab. So if you are doing names and numbers, that's where low tack is great because um, you've got less cavities. It's easier to peel and weed. The high tack you can use for pretty much anything. It's just dealing with a tackier carrier. Um, I like the I like the low tack, but um, there's not a wrong or right option. It's really on preference on which one you like, or if there's a color that you need. Got it. Um, and for Russ, what was the style number for the long sleeve shown? Oh, great question. That was the uh, LST 400, I believe. Thank you. And then um, what polyester brand of shirt do you recommend for polyester decorating? What brand of polyester shirt? Yeah. Oh, polyester so shirt that you recommend. Uh, so <laughs> that's, a, that's kind of a trick question. What kind of decorating <laughs> are we doing here? Uh, <laughs> So, uh, well, let me correct myself because it's the ST400 LS. So I was a little bit backwards there. Um, so if you're doing a polyester shirt and you want to do some decorating, I would go back again and say, uh, just the way the world is right now, I would say if you're going 100% uh, polyester, I would look at maybe like the Sport Tech line and try and go with like the Posit Charge. That's going to give you the most heat resistance and most flexibility that way. Um, anything that's not with that cationic dyeing, um, I would kind of, you want to kind of heat test it first to make sure that your, your process is going to work. Did I answer it right? Did I help? No, that was a pretty good answer. I liked it. I, yeah. Answer, Russ. <laughs> I, I tend to create answer. more confusion than answers. So I just want to make sure that, the, the, that they're satisfied. Okay, one more for right now. Um, would a tri-blend work with a white toner transfer? Sure. Okay, perfect. All right, we're good with questions right now. What, um, what's the heat? On the white toner. Thank you. Yeah, what's, yeah, what's the heat application on that white toner? I'm not sure I can... Talk, or ask the customer and let you know. Yeah, definitely let us know because that's, like I said at the, the beginning, and, and even Russ did at the very beginning of the presentation, the, the rayon is a, it's a sensitive fabric. So if they are wanting to, you know, go with a tri-blend, just like we both reiterated, just make sure that they are um, testing the inside of the garment to make sure that it can withstand that heat. Otherwise, they might have that that unwanted that scorch mark. But I don't know what um, the white toner transfer applies at. I think that would be the biggest question. Okay, so this metallic is almost cool. I'm going to do a little peel test to see if we can. Okay, we're good. Sometimes I can get antsy and peel too quick. So again, this is going to be. I should have put it on my, my mannequin, but peels so nice and beautifully. As you can see, as I am peeling, 
it's just like the, the logo is already adjusting. So I'm going to try to show some movement in this. Hold on. I don't know if that's too close or not, but it's just a really, really thin material. You're not going to get crunch. Like I said, it feels great on, especially um, you can see that we have got skinny stems and then we also have a block and this is still already moving with the garment versus being rigid. Okay, so as you guys can see, this is pretty shiny right now. It's metallic, it's going to be shiny, but I am going to um, use the press again on half of the shirt and show you just how you can get it brushed or some people call it matte as well. In this particular case, I'm just going to drape it over and I am going to cover with a sheet again. We're going to get some wrinkles in the shirt from pressing, but just bear with me on that. You don't need to go long. We're just going to go for four seconds, but you are going to be able to see how that material is um, shifting. Okay. Hold. Can you can see the line? So on this side, that's how we created a brushed look. You can see there's more texture in the material and it almost picks up the texture of the garment. And right in between that I and N, you can see a really good line. And then we just stay super shiny, gloss almost like on the W and I. So not only does this material give you that pop, that wow, maybe you're looking for something other than the glitter. This is just a really good product to use. Um, even if it's in pops of elements, shadows and fonts, um, this can be unisex. It doesn't have to be all gold, but you can easily add just a little in to make it work for a variety of different types of people. So. That is my rant on metallic and how to utilize it in a couple of different ways. Premium plus can be layered, metallic can not. So um, if you are needing to do two colors, make sure that you have the cavities create, or not cavities, but uh, the contour cut created for metallic. Um, and of course, don't be afraid to mix the two. So something like premium plus or ultra weed with metallic, that way you get that nice, matte, soft hand with a really good pop. It's a good way to create some mixed media. Um, okay, we only have about seven minutes left. Russ, do you have any recommendations, closing remarks? Uh, one thing I saw when you had that transfer that you cut off the page where you had a couple different designs, a couple different sizes. If you're making a pitch or presenting that, put those on other pieces so that you can upsell. On coolers, bags, just anything that you can think of that might ex extend sales for you. Awesome. I love little tips on how to increase your product setup for your customer. And of course, adding on to your sales, always excellent. The other thing that you can do is save those as thank yous and give them to your customer for appreciation or samples in order to get other business outside of there as well. Um, Sarah, do we have any other questions? Um, yes, we have one from Don and he asks with a one color print on a white shirt, what price points would you charge for a hundred percent sublimation print, a hundred percent cotton shirt and your favorite tri-blend shirt? A little bit of a loaded question, but it's a good one. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, um, so wow. first of all, you scared me with sublimation because I, I, these, these, these shirts are going to have a, a, a funny look to them and you're not going to have a light color that's not going to have a, a heather look to it. So I'd be real cautious to kind of steer you towards sublimation just because without knowing the design or, or without specifically kind of gearing the design to, to look the way that it may, uh, I'm a little hesitant there. Uh, 
but again, going to a, a good, better, best scenario of, you know, a, a typical t-shirt, cotton t-shirt is going to cost anywhere around three bucks, uh, blends probably in the 450 range. Uh, and then the tri blends slightly higher, you know, sitting at like right, the four, four fifty. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's really what you want to do is kind of use that scenario, to kind of upsell your way and kind of use hopefully what we, what we showed you today is why you want to upsell in, in certain situations, right? Um, is it an athleisure market? Is it, uh, you know, is it something that you want to work where for uh, a virtual presentation, you know, that you can kind of get away with something a, a little bit more of a, a shinier or more of a, a luxurious feel, um, and then again, if you're, if you're selling to uh, on a tri blend, it's, you want it to be that shirt. That's your favorite shirt that you're going to grab time and time again. And it's going to have the life and the longevity to, to do that. It's going to have less shrinkage. It's going to wash and wear well time and time again. Uh, and that's, what's going to kind of set it apart from like a cotton t-shirt or a blend, which you're going to fade and shrink and break down over time. With, along with that, I think it's also understanding your demographics. I'm in Kansas City. So um, what I can, you know, say charge for a shirt might be different than what somebody else can, as well as also understanding who your customer is. Schools might be different than corporate. Corporate might be different than uh, local runs. So it's, that's definitely a loaded question. And I love that question. Um, but I think it also goes back to Josh's opening class and understanding um, that you have to know who your customer is and really going after that specific customer allows you to warrant a higher price. If you're going into a market that you're not familiar with and you're doing a one color shirt and let's say you have five dollars in the shirt and you're trying to get twenty dollars out of that shirt but that customer is really only going to pay 18 that might hurt you same thing for 15 so um if you if you do want to dive a little bit deeper then let's let's keep the conversation going um but like russ was saying there's so many different elements to different garments and then of course uh sticking with the sublimation yeah and i'm happy to dig into that deeper if you want to do that offline too so, okay. Um, okay. Wow, you got can we do one? one, one quick one? Yeah. Can you, have, how can you avoid scorching scorch marks on polyester or heat sensitive fabrics? Two ways. Make sure your machines work in the right way and test your fabric. So um, we've mentioned it a couple of times. You want to take, take your polyester t-shirt or whatever your garment is, flip it inside out and just press the corner uh, of your heat press on that inside hem. And if you get a little mark there, you can still use that garment because you're not wrecking the, the, the sides of the, of the garment or, or showing anything that way. Um, now I'd always recommend with a, with a polyester product, uh, especially if, you're, if you haven't used that polyester shirt or garment and a particular transfer, pair up that combination, use the same temperature that the, that the transfer supplier recommends and try the shirt, make sure the shirt will hold up. If it doesn't, then we've got to go back to the drawing board, whether you're changing the shirt or going back to, you know, a great company like Stalls and Transfer Express, they'll give you options and tell you, hey, you need a lower temperature. This is what we have to offer. So on top of that, this is a like a perfect segue because Jennifer Johnson is actually going over performance fabrics in the next class for um, how the how to sell um, and specifically talking about performance. She will go over how to help with scorching or reduce scorching, even try to avoid scorching. So um, several of you had questions on polyester and um, typically that is in a performance garment. So thank you so much for asking those questions here because we still utilize uh, excuse me polyester in these garments. But um, those of you that are really wanting to look at 100% poly, Jennifer's class is going to tackle all of that. And that's exactly why we wanted to make sure that we talked about these three different types of um, really categories for uh, materials when it comes to, to garments, just because those are the, 
the most popular one. So stay tuned because there will be more information. But just like Russ said, uh, you have to test, test, test and stick with low temperature uh, materials. And uh, with polyester and sublimation, you're, you're running high heat and high time. Um, Sarah, last question, if there's any. Nope, we're all good. Okay, you guys, thank you so much. And uh, Russ, thank seriously, you. Appreciate this the time. so much fun. I, I greatly appreciate it and um, the shirts I'm in love with. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed Russ and enjoy uh, Jennifer Johnson and going over performance fabrics next. So bye guys. Yeah, everybody.